represented Kenya in the 2016 Rio Olympics, placing fifth in the 10,000 meters. Now a U.S. citizen, she finished fifth in last year's Tokyo Marathon and is making her trials debut, Betsy Sane. American record holder in the marathon and half marathon, second all time in the marathon from Richmond, Virginia, Kira D'Amato. <laughs> is the American record holder in the marathon, a 2020 Olympian in 10,000 meters from Flagstaff, Arizona, and Providence, Rhode Island, Emily Sisson. Defending U.S. Olympic Team Trials Marathon Champion, winning the 2020 Trials in Atlanta in an event record. Last spring, she ran her personal best marathon in Boston from Flagstaff, Arizona, Alephine Tulipa. We will do a photo afterwards, so plenty of time for photos. Let's do questions first. Alephine. You're the defending champion of this event. Since your victory in Atlanta, the American record in the marathon has been broken twice by people sitting right here on the stage. What's it going to take to win against such a strong field tomorrow? I think it's going to. I think it's going to take you know an A plus day. Uh, but I'm really grateful and excited to race again. There's some of the best women you know that America has ever gotten in an Olympic trial. So I'm super excited. Emily, you're the American record holder. You've been here in Orlando for a couple of weeks. What has living here for the last couple of weeks taught you about this city and how to prepare for tomorrow? I guess just be prepared for anything. We've been here for three weeks now, and the weather has just been different every day. So I think that's just good, just good practice, being prepared for anything, anything the race throws at you tomorrow. Um, and yeah, just being patient throughout the race, and uh, yeah, like all things that I'm trying to have an April stay. Kira, lots happened in the four years since the trials in Atlanta. You were 15th there and just returned to competitive running. Since then, you've set an American record, made a U.S. team, but you haven't made an Olympics yet. What's it going to mean to you to cross the line in the top three tomorrow? It's going to mean the world to me. I think I've realized through breaking records that people can break them and take them from you, but I think making a team is something that will happen for the rest of my life, so I think, uh, yeah, it's something that won't, won't be taken. Betsy? You've been in the Olympics as a Kenyan citizen. You're now a U.S. citizen. You have an opportunity to wear the American flag, the Team USA uniform. What will that mean to you? Uh, I mean, you know, like when I was growing up, I used to say I want to be an Olympian, which happened in 2016. But uh, for this Olympics, it's going to be really special for me because I have a little son who is two years old, and uh, going to the Olympics will mean the world for me because, you know, running for the USA and running for my son will be really amazing. Jenny, there may be no one with more fans on the street than you tomorrow. You're here in your hometown making your debut. What are you thinking right now about, about what it's going to be like out on the streets as, as people are cheering your name? Um, I mean, you guys all got to just meet John and Betsy, and I just want to say a quick word about them. When you have a kid and you hope that they meet good people along the way, I got to meet John and Betsy early, and those are the types of people you want helping raise your kids. So thank you to them and the people that are going to be out on the course, my high school coaches, high school teammates, um, people like that that have watched my career from afar. It's just going to be really, really special to do um, an event in front of them and kind of bring the show to Orlando. So I'm really excited. And all the people out there cheering for me are just amazing, amazing people. Uh, you, this has been a long journey, so it feels special to have tight relationships and bring it all back home. We have time for three quick questions from the audience. I'll take three questions. Jonathan, front row. Laura. Uh, yeah, question for Kira. Um, a lot of these other women have been to the Olympics before, and you know, 10 years ago they were all running professionally and collegiately. You were out of the sport, so I'm wondering when did this dream of becoming an Olympian really start to hit you that it was a possible, like a realistic possibility? A uh, realistic possibility recently. I've been dreaming about this since I was in elementary school, 
Um, and then I quit for a while and I gave up on the dream and I didn't have the confidence or um, just belief that it would be something that ever be within my reach. And it was after having family and having kids and just, I don't know, just feeling stronger than I ever have that I had the support and the confidence and then just the unconditional love to risk big and to see to see what could become. Um, so really it's been in the last like four to seven years coming back that I've allowed to, to dream that dream again and I'm glad that that confidence came back. But yeah, thank you. Much I am back. That's, I guess you're not that far back. I've always wondered when you are running 26.2 miles, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? Are you thinking about family, your children, what you're going to eat? Or are you just thinking about, I don't want to mark these guys out, I've got to focus, go, go, go. Yeah, all of the above. Or if you see a rotor run by, you're kind of fixated on that. But it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit of everything and a, little, a lot of nothing. Your mind goes to some weird places. I agree. I'm a very judgmental person when I'm running. And so I think, uh, I'm judging my teammates. I'm thinking, why are you running like that? I'm thinking, wow, why did you dress like that? You know. Um, so, uh, but then again, like I think at some point you kind of zone out and you don't even know what's happening. And my last experience for the Olympic trials, it was so loud that I'm thinking I can feel like I can hear my ears ringing. And like I'm like, I can't believe all these people are out here. Why did you get up so early? So like I'm always thinking about everything, and then like once the last couple of months, I'm thinking, oh, I need to win this thing. Oh, I can't win it. I have somebody right with me. So there's a lot of things happening, but I'm definitely not thinking about food. <laughs> We've got time for one more. Are you want to go, Jenny? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna find out on a Sunday what we, what, what, or on Saturday what we think about when we run this long. <laughs> We got time for one more. Marissa. I think as a woman, the beautiful thing we've seen in the past Olympic cycle is the growth of moms and, and moms succeeding. And as a fellow mom, I think that's amazing. So those, uh, the three of you that are moms up there, can you talk about the shift that has allowed moms to have the space and the confidence to continue to go after their dreams once they have children? I always say, like, I feel like I have the oldest COVID baby, and I feel like before I had my daughter, you know, the sport was not really welcoming, or that um, it wasn't as welcoming to moms as it is right now, and I would say that I think we have more moms that have a chance to make this team now than we've ever had, and I'm so excited about that. But I think it took women, you know, who've come before us, like Carol Gouger, Alison Felix, you know, and Alicia Montana speaking out about the experience and how they came back as moms and they were stronger. And then companies, you know, that support us. We are very grateful for hope. And, you know, when I decided to have a family, they were excited and they were on board with me. And then it's like companies came along and decided that they wanted to support moms. And I think right now, like in the last three years, we've had so many pro athletes in their prime beside a few moms. And I think we can now see that being a mom is a strength. It's not a weakness that we used to think. And I'm really glad that I live in this time where like, I can run and my daughter can watch me. And hopefully in the future, she will know that her dreams are valid if she works out for it. And everybody and those that are behind her, they like say her bosses, will support her fully because, again, it's a strength to be a mom. You have something more than yourself to run for. Yeah, I don't think I could say it any better than that, but I do believe that being a mother has made me a better runner, and being a runner has made me a better mother, and I think it kind of just puts everything in perspective of why I'm out there and running, but I think it has taken a lot of women to come before us and set the stage, and I think we're still moving forward, and we still have a way to go as women, but um, I'm proud to be one of those women showing what moms can do, and yeah, moms shouldn't be messed with. <laughs> Uh, for me, uh, in 2017, uh, I thought about taking a maternity leave, to be honest, but then I, I planned and then I got excited a little bit because I knew what was the consequences. Um, but when I saw in 2020 when, you know, those amazing women, Alison Felix and Anisha, came out, um, I was the first person saying, like, it's time to go because at least you know, like, it's, going to, it's not going to be a punishment. The way I would think it was kind of like a punishment for women because at the end of the day, 
many of us went to our families, but we were all scared because you know what is going to happen. You're going to you're gonna get no payment when you go for maternity leave. But since I started being a mom, it's been one of the biggest things that I really appreciate. And I wish this could have been like this since. And who knows, maybe we could all be having like three or five kids because people are different. You know, like some loves children. And I was part of those people that I feel like my life has changed in a good way. And I'm super excited to be sending other moms out there. Jenny Simpson, Betsy Sena, Kira D'Amato, Emily Sisson, and Alephine Tulimak. Five of just the many women you will see out there tomorrow looking for a shot on the Paris team. We're going to do a quick photo.